Hi folks, this is Scott Price with another edition of XBM's Expedited Explanations. These are short videos that help you maximize the value of your Atlassian tool suite. Today I'm going to give you a brief overview of Tempo's cost tracker for Tempo timesheets. All right, I want to demo new cost tracker for Tempo timesheets. It's a marketplace add-on that is um, brand new, only has um, only has three reviews so far, but 146 installs, so it's um, it's catching on quite rapidly. And um, the the premise of the app is to have a simple methodology for tracking costs. And so here you see a graph showing the actual versus budgeted cost line, and then you actually get to see uh, multiple projects that are being tracked across uh, budget and actual cost and um, then also you get to see the the grouping capability grouping capability is similar to uh, how epics work but it is a completely distinct feature and you can group issues however you like so let's jump into the app and take a take a quick look at some live data so this is um, this is a cloud instance with Tempo added. So I'm going to go to the Tempo app and the cost tracker entry shows up here once you install cost tracker for Tempo timesheets. And the first landing page for the cost tracker is actually uh, a page with multiple projects. A project is, is distinct from a Jira project. It can be anything that you like for it to be. Uh, you just have to establish a name and you can establish a budget if you like. You have to select a filter that you want this project to be based on. Uh, I'm going to select the Plantronics because I know I have some time uh, and cost there. You can establish a default hourly rate for all of the time that's being logged in your project and then also the the currency that you'd like to use. And then you can jump into configuration mode or you can just click the create button and we can jump to the configuration mode in a moment. So right now what Cost Tracker is doing for this new project, based on the filter that I selected, it is importing 685 tasks that are a part of the filter that I selected. And so what it's going to do is it's going to grab all that data and it's going to start looking at the time logs associated with those and it's going to start applying that default rate of $90 an hour that we put in and it's going to apply that to all the time that's been logged against those issues and it's going to give us a graph showing us the impact of those costs over time. And so typically what you would see is a, a graph that grows from left to right as um, as more work gets done and more costs get added up on a particular project. And we'll see that render in just a moment. Here we go. Now we see that this project started uh, near about the 24th of October and it's showing the, the current cost level of uh, 440 thousand dollars and some uh, some change here. Let's um, take a look at the configuration for a moment because what we're not seeing right now is a budget line. So let's establish a budget for this project in the configuration area. We can establish a budget. Let's say we've got a five hundred thousand dollar budget for this in US dollars and we can go back to that scope section and we should see a budget line show up. Okay, so now we see the budget line showing up at $500,000 against the labor cost of $440,000. Now you see this expenses section here. This is a very simplistic way of tracking expenses. 
you have this at expense button here and you just type a, a brief description so maybe we had to do SOW before consulting work that we had done and uh, perhaps that was um, five thousand dollars and we don't have any categories in here at, at the present time um, but we can just start we can just build one so we'll we'll add a new category called consulting and um, enter the date at which this was this expense was incurred and add expense and so now we have a, a running tally of expenses that we've incurred as a part of this project and now we're also going to see that uh, showing up here in, in the expenses area we also see the remaining budget line uh, that's tracking along with us um, we've already seen the scope section but what we haven't seen yet was the opportunity to select groups and so this grouping area is a way to create a dynamic group. It's uh, the group can be anything that you want it to be. It behaves somewhat like an epic, a Jira epic, but it's completely distinct from Jira issues. And um, you can group them any way you want to. And so I'm going to group this by the design phase and um, the build phase. Let's say, and then the deploy phase. And so with these three phases, now I can start putting my issues in the proper phase. So in the deploy phase, now I have an issue. Uh, I can just drag and drop those issues into the phase that I want them to show up in. I'll put a few in the build phase here. And now I start, oops. I accidentally dropped those in the design phase. Uh, doesn't matter. I'll just drop those in build here. And now we've got some some costs that are going to get started uh, bucketing up in these different buckets. And so now we see in the deploy phase, I've got four tasks, and the costs associated with them are twelve twenty four and thirteen hours and thirty six minutes of time spent. So, however, I decide to group these. And obviously, I can change change the name here if I want to anytime. Uh, however, I want to group these. I have the the opportunity now to to put my issues together in a way that helps me to track costs based on any criteria that I like in terms of grouping. It uh, if you've got a lot of issues in your project, it is a little bit time consuming to go through here and do the the drag and drop, but um, but nevertheless, it is possible to do that. Okay, another thing that you can do from this scope area is you can export this data to CSV. Now, when we do this export, one of the things that we need to notice is that this file downloads without any extension. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and put my CSV extension on there, and then it'll open up with Excel. And here's my Excel file with the data that I have in the scope section, along with the grouping of uh, deploy, build, and design. So now we can uh, we can use this in the spreadsheet any way we want to. And so that's that's a handy feature. The next thing we want to look at is the team section. So in this team section, we have the folks that are going to be working on this project based on them being assigned to issues in the project. And so everyone right now has a, a cost that's added up for the work that they've done based off of the default rate that we built in the configuration section. So we know how much each employee is costing us and how much time they're spending uh, on this particular project. Now we can also go into the configuration area under rates and we can establish a, a rate that's different than the default uh, for each of these folks if we want to. Let's say that uh, David is uh, his most expensive developer at 125, Gary is 110, um, Jeffrey is fairly new, say he's getting 75, uh, Jerome's getting 75, 
and um, Lucille here is uh, is equally high paid with with David and um, and on and on you go and then when you go back to the to the scope section or excuse me to the team section now the cost is reflective of the actual rate that you uh, put in for those individuals distinctly so we've already looked at the expenses uh, the configuration the next thing we want to take a look at in the configuration is the sharing section here this is where we want to allow people to participate with us in managing this particular project you can see that I'm the project owner here by virtue of creating the project but I can also add others with me to help configure share the configuration load I'm going to add this user John Doe in this case and click add here and so now John Doe is participating with me as as a partner in the configuration the caveat here is that I cannot hide the rates section from John Doe and so by virtue of adding them here in this configuration sharing section I also am giving them access to the rates section so I need to be really cautious about this and only add people in the sharing section that I truly want to be participants with me in in all the configuration and so that's that's the caveat but with that caveat this has the potential to be a really valuable simple tool to help companies track costs which are not obviously native in Jira thanks for watching if you're interested in further exploring Tempo's cost tracker for Tempo timesheets or you want to talk to one of our experienced consultants go to xpm.com and let us know if this video was helpful to you please hit the like button if there's a subject that you would like to see XPM discuss in future editions of expedited explanations please let us know in the comments section below until then this is Scott Price wishing you success in all of your Atlassian adventures